All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 375. Each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions uh, that are, uh, have been asked and addressed in the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight, we have uh, uh, Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of uh, WasaWeb.net. He's based in uh, um, Wimbledon in the UK. And he's also a Google product expert in the AdSense community. Tim Kapper is a Google product expert in the Google My Business community. Uh, he's um, CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. Um, he's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. And uh, David Rosam is a leading internet marketer. He's based in West Sussex. Uh, he's in the sunny south of uh, the UK. Um, he's a leading internet marketer. He can be found at davidrosam.com. All right, let's... Um, Go to our first uh, question. Um, it's titled How to uh, Avoid Spammy uh, Violation Reports. Um, it's from Utilizator Supreme. I tell you, um, how would you pronounce that, Mr. Taki? Supreme. Okay, let's go. Um, it's when building backlinks, how to avoid a spammy violation reports. You said I started building backlinks for a certain site on a Q and A uh, uh, site. Uh, all of them are relevant, but I get the message: that your comments violate our policy. Don't spam unless you will be banned. How to deal with that and how to avoid it? Uh, just yeah, don't uh, try and drop links in um, Q and A sites. Uh, it's quite simple, really. Um, uh, a lot of larger established sites will allow you to drop a link into an answer or something when when it's relevant. But you typically in the the more authoritative ones. So when I say authoritative ones, is probably the only place you ever want to drop one. Um, but those, typically, you have to build up some form of point system. You have to build up some form of authority within your logged-in user profile before it allows you to drop a link, which the whole point behind is that once you build up your credibility within, within their profiles, is so that no Tom, Dick, and Harry can just turn up and drop a link you know, to avoid spam. Um, so, look, the simple question is, so either don't just go in and drop a link, because if it does allow you to, then it's a crap site. The ones that don't allow you to, well, the whole point being is, you know, why don't you build up yourself some credibility and a profile within that genre? Um, once you've built up your credibility and profile, number one, people will trust the link that you're dropping right and actually trust the content that you're, you're dropping because you've built up that credibility anyway um and secondly you know you don't always need to drop a link just answer the guy's question without dropping a link yeah fair enough thank you tim all right let's wrap this one up we'll go to the next it's from nathan nikolai gaby um it's titled Conflicting Information on a Sitemap. Um, Nathan said, I'm seeing conflicting information regarding no index on a sitemap. No index on a sitemap. You, you don't put no index on a sitemap, do you? Um, anyway, Google Search Console uh, marks it as an error, but some articles online are saying the sitemap should not be indexed. 
Um, are there any clarifications? Um, the whole point about a site map is that it should be spiderable um, because that's what it's there for. Um, so it should be indexed. Mm, not necessarily, right? Because I knew someone was going to say that. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> because it, doesn't, it's, it seems one of these these situations where the where the answer is very simple. But I'll let you go on. No, yeah, because in a sense, why do you want your side map being indexed? You want to be crawled for sure. You want search engines to know their existence, and you want them to crawl those sitemaps, but you don't necessarily want them to be indexed mm. and show up in results. But they won't, like RSS feeds don't show up in the results. Yeah, so I think, in a sense, I don't think it's something that people should worry about it too much um so you know if 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 you search for your site or if you search for your brand and you and if the site map turns up then there's probably something going wrong um so you i mean i don't think there's any issue with no indexing the site map personally um but i don't see the point of doing that all right thank you um mr Turkey. thank you david all right let's um call this one done and we'll go to the next this is one from chris green it's titled creating a pillar page p-i-l-l-a-r page for an e-commerce site let's see Tim Kappa was having trouble figuring out what a pillar page was. Um, I reckon if it had been a pillow page, you'd probably know better. Anyway, um, here we have a question. Um, Chris said, uh, oh, hi guys. Recently someone mentioned to me to create a pillar page and I don't quite understand what this means for an e-commerce site. Uh, if the site is to be www.nakedcashmere.com, would a pillar page simply be a blog post about cashmere, like www.cogirl.com? Uh, um, and the rest of that link can be read on uh, the uh, um, SEO Questions Facebook group. What's a pillar page? It's a uh, what? What's that? What's that thing they have in Yoast? They they talk about pillar content, don't they, or something like that? Um, have I got the terminology right? I try try to ignore what uh, Yoast recommends for me anyway. But there is. They do talk about, um, is it pillar content? Something like that. Um, but I think I think Michael Martinez has got this right here. This is another one of these great sets of rules that we're supposed to adhere to um, in SEO, and SEO doesn't doesn't work like that. Um, you know, I, I think you know it, it's a. Uh, if we're getting at what Michael is talking about, then it's it's bonkers. You know, this is back to the old days where we were supposed to write blog posts that are 300 words long. Um, and certain plugins still occasionally tell us that we're not writing enough um, for no other reason that that's what it thinks the minimum amount is. So, but I think that if it's, if it's talking about structuring your content, um, to have a um, a page about a particular um, a particular product, um, cashmere, as opposed to um, sheep's wool or something, um, 
then yes, um, and then have your next clicks as about um, cashmere jumpers, cashmere underwear, cashmere boots, whatever you have your in cashmere. Um, so yes, that that kind of that 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 kind of says yes, that's a good idea. Structure your structure your uh, website sensibly, um, but I'm not sure about you know. Oh, you need a pillar page. Um, and if it is uh, a thing like Michael's talking about, uh, yeah, if it, if it if it makes sense to a user, um, create them. Um, and and a lot of the time, you know, you can use these really, really effectively to dominate um, to dominate your your your, your market. Um, and and you, you you they can be done really well. I think I dropped in my comment to you. I showed you the snowboarding guys who you literally cannot physically search for. You these guys appear for every single thing on snowboards. Like, I mean, you even type in a freaking barcode to a snowboard, and these guys are there. Right? They dominate the market, and they've used you call them pillar pages but i just call them guides you know um <laughs> simple as that but you know you and, and bear in mind these need to be done well you can't just go and create just a you know then you might as well just keep it to a blog post about something on cashmere but if you're going to do a guide do them well because i mean literally you can go down to you know on cashmere you can you know or whatever you, you go in depth equally these don't necessarily just have to be clothes for example um you know if you uh it, they can be they can be used very well with b2b um especially in tech specs um things like this you, you can use them very effectively to to you know you know stand head and shoulders above uh, the other crowds because for some reason, I don't know why, but you know, manufacturing products and all this, t people people don't want to just put in uh, pages of, of tech specs. But if you think about it, it's actually bloody crucial to the buyer because they need to see these things and millimeter clearances and differences and you know all these kind of things. Even if it is about a freaking flathead screw, you know, a buyer that's going to buy five hundred thousand of them needs to know all of these things. Um, so they can be used massively effectively, but what I'm saying is do them well, you know, because if you just create another one then you, it, it, you know, if you're only going to go half house down the line, there's no point, but, you know, do them well. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Well, let's move along to uh, number uh, four and I run with from Faris Ahmed. Uh, Faris asks, uh, is the spam score a Moz? Uh, does it really matter? Um, is taking a backlink from a, a high spam score website, uh, is that bad? Um, if, what if I create a backlink on a website of, uh, I'm not gonna read out all of these, uh, uh, scores and so on. They're, 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 I'll let um, somebody else here explain why. Um, but um, actually, look, uh, let me finish the, uh, reading out the question and uh, throw it open to be answered. So you know, I think you should understand how they calculate the spam score. Uh, but then also on the flip side, you should also remember um, uh, that you know it's a tool that that is created by people that speci specifically measures what they feel is a spam score. I think I've chucked my site into that. And it's high. 
the reason being is because um, people all over the place have linked to me, you know, from all sorts of different things. And also, it's like, so what? You know, okay, so, doesn't bother me. And it does my, you know. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's like, I think you need to just check out how, or at least kind of understand how they're calculating it, then look through your site uh, and then think, ah, okay, maybe this link is what they're looking at. But when you look at the link, you go, yeah, but that's fair legit. You know, that was, that was a link coming from some guy who whatever, whatever, and you know that the site's fair legit and it's a new site or something. Uh, and that's why his score isn't that great and that you know what i mean so yeah look i think if you understand how you calculate it and then start looking at each one individually then you can like anything like with bad links you can go yeah i'll keep that yeah i want to disavow that you, you need to look through it if you actually even give a damn about the moza spam score yep thank you tim all right, let's go to the next. And uh, in this case, it's from Lavani Mervalashvili. Um, Lavani asked a question titled, Should I use RHEL no opener, no refer on internal links? Um, he goes on to say, As I know it's for external links to prevent access between an open link and a page where um the link is from it has no interaction with the google algorithm right so it doesn't have an effect on ranking but do i need these attributes on internal links um no i i, I would <laughs> you can use them if you want to but um, but really, what's what's the point? Um, if it's an internal link, just do it to the direct URL. People want to click through, they click through, they go to the direct page. Um, well, no, you don't have to use it. No, I think, oh, isn't there a sort of security element to this, which is applicable if you have target? So, you know, if you have target equals something, then it is. Yeah, because the, then it opens in a, yeah, then it opens in a new page. But it shouldn't really be an issue if it's your own site, would it? I don't think so. I don't think it'd be an issue. Yeah. Yeah, for mm. internal, yeah. Mm. Well, I suppose there's no harm. <laughs> you know? There's no harm. There's no harm. Like, I wouldn't bother, but, you know, there is no harm. It's not going to, no. No, I, I can't think there's any harm either, but uh, why bother? Yeah. yeah and I'm, I, I, uh, as always, always uh, uh, I agree with you guys. All right, uh, number five, uh, let's go to number six. Bong Lee asks, uh, should I do exact keyword match on an H2 tag, or would it count as spamming? Um, like for example, Michael Martinez has answer, uh, he said, that's not spam. It may not always be effective, but it's not spam. Uh, the rule of thumb about spam is that it is egregious and attempts to unfairly manipulate search results. Go ahead, David. I'm sorry I interrupted you. That's okay. Um, I, I, I will just say what M Michael says, but also bear in mind that if you're thinking about using that exact keyword match in a number of H2 tags, you may well find yourself getting in problems with spamming. Um, but doing doing it once is, is fine. Um, in fact, I would say that's almost good good practice um, because I, I always go back to how how does a um, a piece of 
uh, how does a, a piece of written content work? Um, you have headlines and you have subheads, and now that those should be a kind of um, they they sh they should outline a theme. They should all go together. They should take you through it. So you know your keywords do naturally go into H ones and H twos. So that's fine. You know that's probably good co good practice and, and good writing. Um, I'm not going to go into how to write SEO content now, but you know I would think that using exact keyword matches in H2 tags would be really natural and really good practice. Thank you, David. Okay, we're at number six on our run list. We're hitting for number seven. Utilize to Prime. Uh, ask how backlinks help a domain to rank. Um, you know, I know the, the, the backlink clicks um, even no follow, but relevant are signals to Google. It's something interesting that people are talking about. But I mean, how to find and determine places um, which will have a positive uh, impact on ranking. I uh, also point out Eamon Johns. Uh, he said uh, um, the uh, less it takes to get a link, the less that link tends to be worth, mostly because others will have spammed it into being worthless. That's exactly right. Tim was just saying something similar to that uh, a moment ago. All right. Um, have a guide. Can you answer this one? So, so this is yeah. I mean, exactly what Eamon said is you know, uh, the easier it is to get a link, um, the less likely it's going to be a good link. Equally, you don't ever want to go about buying links because they tend to be, you know, pretty easy to spot from Google's point of view, and also they're pretty much crap. Um, if you're unsure on this kind of stuff, here's my recommendation. Um, don't look at, don't look or think about links, right? Uh, work on your site. You've already, already asked, and you've already said about like, how do I not get spammy? Uh, 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 spam warnings when I drop links in Q&As. And this goes back to the same thing. Concentrate on your site. You know, provide the content on your site. Make your site the authority, or at least start working to making your site and your content shareable, right? At the same time, you, you know, you're using these Q&A sites or other, other forums, other social media, or whatever the case may be within that genre, and provide useful information to people. When you start providing useful information without trying to drop in links, people start to trust you and they start to see you more and more appearing for certain queries in your space. And they begin to start trusting you and they begin to start reading your stuff. And then they begin to start sharing it. And then you start getting links. You start getting mentions, you start getting asked, people start asking you to contribute to their site with information that you have shared on yours or expand this or podcasts or things like this. And you build up your authority that way and your links will come naturally to you. So that's what I would concentrate on. Thank you, Tim. All right. Let's, um go forward again. Nathan Nikolai Gady asks uh, a question titled Avoiding the 404 Experience. He said, should I delete pages from a website and redirect to the main page to avoid the 404 experience? Or should I just delete them and ask people to remove them from search results? This rings the bell. Didn't we answer this question last week? Um, he said, should I disallow them, keep them, or set them to no index, or just remove them from the site map? Is that enough? Um, 
Well, this should be an easy one to ask the guys. Who wants to do it? Well, you've answered it. <laughs> Who's going to read Jim's answer? <laughs> did I say it, did I? Oh, yes, now I remember. Cool. Getting old. Oh, yes, I thought it was, that was quite poetic. Yeah, yeah I, I think... I think most of the time you can ignore 404s. If you've got a small site and loads and loads of 404s, I think you, you've got a, a, a user experience problem. So um, it's it's scale, isn't it? You know, a, a few 404s are around and don't sweat them. Um, you know, lots of, uh, lots of tools that we use on our website go potty about 404s. Um, but, you know, don't worry about them unless you've got loads of them for the side of your, the side of your site. Excellent. All right. Uh, anybody else before we move on to the next? Not sure if there is a next, but let's find out. Yes, uh, question nine, uh, uh, number nine on our run list. Uh, do backlink to my YouTube video help to rank the video? For Manish Garg. He goes on to say, uh, um, what are the top ranking factors for video apart from on page? Um, I'll be interested in the answers to this. I see Dennis Ballan there says uh, social signal. I think the, the most important things are, are signals within YouTube itself. Um, likes and comments and subscriptions and all those things that you do on, uh, uh, on, on YouTube. Um, but then again, rank the video. Where do we mean rank the video? Are we talking about ranking it? within YouTube, you know, a lot of people talk about YouTube being a search engine. Some people say it's the second biggest search engine in the world. Um, are we talking about that or are we talking about ranking it on uh, Google itself? And I'm not sure how the, how the factors within, um, within YouTube work within uh, Google itself. I imagine they're just as effective, but I'm not a, an expert on this. I, I come to conclusions. I try to answer it. Maybe someone else knows. Okay. All right, let's um, move on to the next. Um, is that fair, fair enough, guys? All right, question 10 is, will Google recognize my links as spam? Yes. Um, can anybody um, um, speak to this one, please, from utilize that Brian? I think we've had three answers, um, sorry, three questions that basically say the same thing. How, how, can I, how can I build loads of links without being rumbled, either by the site involved or Google itself? Um, the, the answer is, if it's difficult to build those links, then perhaps you will get away with it. If it's easy, then perhaps you won't. Um, I don't know. It's the, I find link building absolutely soul destroying, so I don't do it. Um, it's the most it's the most boring thing you can do on earth. So um, I'm sure you can do something better with your time than uh, than try to build these things. It's oh, sorry. It's not. It's not a. It's not a direct and considered answer. But you know, really. You're you're going down a route that um, I wouldn't recommend. So 
that that's that's it really you've had you've given three three questions and I, i'm not sure that uh any um any que any answer uh, beyond don't do it um you know i can't can't really really say much apart from that yeah i mean it doesn't sound good does does it you know this person has been warned by one platform that their posts are spam and it sounds as if they're doing this on multiple sites now so they're essentially posting the same things on different sites in order to get links i mean that really doesn't sound like a good idea Yeah. Yes, thank you, Mr. Taki. Thank you, David. Um, yes, um, it, it's... Um, it's usually a lot, a lot of wasted effort. Um, and if, you know, you, you, if people put the same effort uh, into... Uh, uh, making a gen as a, a site um, with good content, as, as Tim said, uh, a, a couple of questions back down the list. Um, their, their, their website will be there and it'll survive long term. I mean, if the website has got good content on it and people are going to it, um, it, it'll, it'll be fine. Um, but if, if you just keep putting in links and so on. People complain to Google. People write in and say, you know, this site is is, is spamming and uh, here's this link and here's that link. Uh, everything works until you're successful. Um, if, if you want to do it uh, in the way, um, it's just not smart. Anyway, number 11 on our run list from Paul Torbman. It's on toxic spectrum. Uh, he said, question about backlinks. Someone ran a scan by a SEMrush on his site and came up with a list of toxic backlinks. Uh, some of them are from directory sites, um, yellow.place, uh, for example. Um, and uh, Yeah. yeah. I don't think I don't think there's any harm in disavowing them, um, but if you just got a few of them, I would ignore them. If you got loads and loads of them, um, maybe you, I think you need to look at how the the site has been performing and when these toxic bank backlinks arrived. Um, if it's if they are causing if there are a lot of them and they appear to be causing problems for the site, then you probably need to do something about them. Otherwise, don't sweat it. Um, leave them there. Google um, Google knows the sort of things that, that they are, and provided that you haven't gone mad and built built a load of them, um, or someone hasn't gone mad and built a load of them, Google will just just forget them. So, um, yeah, see if there's any evidence of them doing harm to the site. Otherwise, don't bother. Okay. Well, I think we're on our last question. So uh, I'll click this button and we'll go to uh, thank you for watching time. Um, before we go, I'd like to thank people like Michael Martinez, Brenda Mitchell, and uh, Ammon Johns, uh, the people who uh, give up their time through the week and, and answer questions as soon as they come in. Um, and um, it, it makes our, our job um, on, on Thursday nights uh, so much easier. Um, it's um, much appreciated. Before we go, I must also thank uh, Masataki Wasa, Jim Kappa, and David Roseanne. Um, we'll be back uh, at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again. Um, but uh, until uh, 
Until then, it's good now. Um, okay, I've clicked the wrong button. This is not my day. Okay, now we can stop recording.